In this video, we will talk about macros. We will highlight their main programming style rules. We'll even go further and demonstrate the different uses of macros in C, such as defining constant variable, function-like macro, and a slightly advanced one, the X macro. So stay tuned to learn all about macros and how useful they are in the C language. I'd like to begin with some generic rules that apply to all types of macros. Well, the first one is that you should always use uppercase letters for macro naming and separate words with underscores. So a good example is this define array length here. Defining max array length to 10, these, we have a name with three different words and we separate them with underscore. And the second rule that I think it's also very useful, uh, that's if you have multiple macros with the same prefix, you can use double underscore to separate the prefix part from the actual naming part. Let me demonstrate that. So, for instance, if I'm defining a macro for my main task signals, that's one of the things I do with operating system, and the first signal is suspend and I set this to 1 now I want to define two others with the same prefix so I'll define a resume signal and I give it the number 2 and I also want to define another one and I want to call it stat those are some of the common things you will use in operating system to signal certain events. You can see that the, all the prefix are the same up to main task signal and then they take different names. For that, you may use double underscores to separate the prefix part from the actual name part. And that's in essence rule number two. And it's a very useful practice. It will make your code very readable. And that's generally used only if you have a series of micro definitions that are on the same sequence of lines. Now let's take a look at defining constants using macros. We've already demonstrated that above. It is as simple as defining a number, but I'd like to highlight some important notes here. First, when there is no arithmetic exists as part of the macro statement, then it's okay to just write the number as it is, just like what we had here, max array 10. We just put the number in there. However, when you have any arithmetic as part of the macro, um, for example, have making some addition, multiplication or division, you must put the parentheses. Uh, otherwise, you're running into a risk of if you call the macro within another macro and there was an arithmetic operation which has a higher priority, you can get unwanted results. So therefore, it's, you should always put parentheses if there are any arithmetic operations involved. So for example, if I want to change this max array length to 5 times 2, then that's an arithmetic operation and I am and I should or rather you have to put parentheses to guarantee deterministic outcome or, predict, or predicted outcome, so to speak. The second common use for macro is what's called function-like macros. And as the name implies, it's when using macro to define a function that takes on parameters and returns result. The fundamental difference between macro functions and normal functions in C is that macro works on the principle of code substitution in a build stage called pre-processing which before the actual compilation takes place and at this particular stage the pre-processor looks for all macro names and replaces them with their macro statement like a direct code substitution so for example we defined max array length early what the pre-processor gonna do when we build the project is that it's going to look for all the instances of max array length and replaces it like literally replaces it with the parentheses in five times two that's 
simply how macro works. On the other hand, normal functions actually get compiled and checked for types. They get allocated, stack and heap and things like that. And you might be wondering why we would want to use macro functions if we have the normal C functions that are actually a lot safer in terms of catching errors and warnings. The short answer is that macros work better in generalization. If the function you want to write is very generic and parameters type are not specified beforehand or they can take different types, then macro functions are preferred. Now let's explain this with an example. Take the case where you want to do some basic physics unit conversion like converting temperature from degrees to Fahrenheit and vice versa and the variable type could be float, integer or double. You aren't sure. You might either write three different normal C functions for each different type a function for float, a function for integer, and a function that takes on double parameters. The more convenient alternative in this case is to write a macro function to execute the conversion formula. And then, as part of your own code, you can specify the variable type later. Because macro code won't depend on variable type at all. Now, of course, there are some crucial safety rules for using macro functions safely. And that's the main thing I wanted to highlight as part of this video. First, let's write the macro functions to do the temperature conversion, and then we will look about we will look at the rules as we go along. So a simple macro to convert between C and Fahrenheit is to multiply the temperature in C by 1.8 and then add 3 or add 32. So you can write a macro function like this. Uh, and remember, it takes all uppercase letter. So I'm going to call this temperature convert C to F. C stands for Celsius and F for Fahrenheit. And this, and this is a parametric macro, so it takes a parameter X. And then I'm going to define the formula, which is simply x multiplied by 1.8 plus 32. But because I want to be able to do this in integer form as well, I could just multiply by 18 and then divide by 10. This way, all the numbers are going to be in integer form. Okay. This is just generalization, like a further generalization of the formula so that we'll be able to call in this macro safely. If the x variable type is integer, double or float, it won't really matter if we did this particular way. And now let's define the other formula to convert from F to C. So all the macro name take on uppercase and you separate the words with, uh, with an underscore and the parameter x. And now the formula to convert back from f to c is simply to do the reverse. So you take off 32 and then divide by 1.8. So that's going to be x minus 32 and then you divide by 18, sorry, by 1.8. Now, because I want to make this generalize for, for integers, I'd like to multiply this by 10 and then divide by 18. So doing exactly the opposite of what I did early in the first statement. This way, I'll be able to call in the macro if the x type is integer or float. Or double. It won't matter because all the numbers here are in integer form. And that's a friendly way to make this macro even more generic. Okay, now the first rule that I'd like to highlight for using function like macro is that for each use of the macro parameter, you have to surround the parameter itself with parentheses. Now, this might sound counterintuitive. But that's extremely important. So you'd, you'd want to surround x 
the actual just the x the parameter with parentheses and any use of the parameter so if i decided to add x later on you can't just add an x you need to surround it with parentheses and the reason for that there is a really good reason for this and the reason for that is that if you call in the macro within your main if you call it and pass in just a normal temperature say 25 that's fine it's going to work either way if you surround x with parentheses or not it will probably work however if you you pass this as 25 plus 5 now x will literally get substituted by 25 plus 5 and if you just pass it like this you are gonna run into trouble because 5 will get multiplied by 18 first and then you add 25 but if you always surround the micro parameter with parentheses whatever operation whatever arithmetic you add when calling the macro will get executed first this guarantees that this x which is 25 plus 5 is executed first and that's the most important rule when it comes to function like macros now let's have a little bit more fun let's try to call this from our main and i'm gonna demonstrate practically the different results you will get if you surround x with parentheses or uh, or not okay so let me call this from my main so i'd like to convert a temperature from let me call it within my main and i'm going to define a variable let's use floating point the macro doesn't really care as long as i pass x with the floating type then all the operation will be carried out using floats because the compiler is extremely clever so i define this as temperature in c and i set this to 46.3 okay and i want to call the macro and i'm going to print this into using printf so i'm going to say 46.3f um sorry so 46.3c is equal to this much in fahrenheit and i want to call the macro right in here And this is going to return me a floating point and i want to pass in the temperature in c as simple as that and i want to print this in a new line as well so let me build this and see what results we get that was built successfully now let's run in the executable and see what the result is okay so 46.3 C is equal to 115.34 NF. Let's verify that with Google. So 46.3 is indeed equal to 115.34, just like what we have in here. Now, if I'm gonna try something else, so if I wanna test my macro and I wanna change the parameter, so instead of passing 46.3, now I want to pass in 45.3 f plus 1.0 f okay I'm just going to add an arithmetic as part of the macro parameter and let's see what we get so I'm going to build again uh, I need to close this first and let's have a look at the executable again now sure enough I get the same result but let's try to get rid of these parentheses that I told you about around the macro parameter itself. Now, if I get rid of them and the macro that converts from C to F, now I expect to get different result. Let's have a look. Well, exactly. Now I get 38.33, which is completely wrong. And that's demonstrate rule number one very well indeed. So you always need to surround the macro parameter with parentheses in order to get defined behavior because uh, passing arithmetic as part of the macro parameter, macro doesn't really resolve that. You need to manually enforce it with parentheses. Now let's just try again for the sake of um, 
demonstrating that again. Here we go, we get the correct result. So that is how to use function like macro. Now there is a little uh, important rules that I'd like to highlight as well. Uh, well, basically, if the types, if the variable type is necessary, then you should probably replace the macro with a normal function. Okay, so if you're always sure that you want to use floating points all the time, then you need to write just an equivalent function that checks for the floating point type and then pass it, use a normal function basically to execute this formula. Okay, and you can have a combination between a macro and a normal function. So the macro will uh, will execute the formula and the normal C function will make a call to the macro. But you get the advantage of checking for type warnings and errors as well. And that's all I want to talk about for uh, uh, macros.